in three remarkable careers as a foe of British oppression and champion of independence from 1761 to 1777, as an American diplomat in Europe from 1778 to 1788, and as the first Vice President, 1789 to 1797, and then the second President, 1797 to 1801 of the United States, John Adams was a founder of the United States. Perhaps equally important, however, was the life of his mind and spirit. In a pungent diary, vivid letters, learned tracts, and patriotic speeches, he revealed himself as a quincentennial Puritan, patriarch of an illustrious family, tough-minded philosopher of the Republic, sage, and sometimes a vain, stubborn, and vitriolic partisan. John Adams was born in Braintree, now known as Quincy, Massachusetts, on October 30, 1735, in a small salt box house still standing and open to visitors. His father, John Adams, a deacon and a fifth generation Massachusetts farmer, and his mother, the former Susanna Boylston, were, their son wrote, quote, both fond of reading, end quote. So they resolved to give bookishly inclined John a good education. He became the first of his family to go to college when he entered Harvard in 1751. There, and in six further years of intensive reading while he taught school and studied law in Worcester and Boston, he mastered the technicalities of his profession and the literature and learning of his day. By 1762, when he began 14 years of increasingly successful legal practice, he was well-informed, ambitious, and public-spirited. His most notable, notable good fortune, however, occurred in 1764 when he married Abigail Smith. John Adams' marriage of 54 years to this wise, learned, strong-willed, passionate, and patriotic woman began the brilliant phase of Adams' family history that produced their son, John Quincy, his son, Charles Francis, his sons, Henry and Brooks, and numerous other distinguished progeny. In 1761, John Adams began to think and write and act against British measures that he believed infringed on colonial liberties and the right of Massachusetts and the other colonies to self-government. A pamphlet entitled A Dissertation on the Canon and the Feudal Law and Town Instructions Denouncing the Stamp Act in 1765 marked him as a vigorous patriotic penman and holding various local offices he soon became a leader among Massachusetts radicals. Although he never wavered in his devotion to colonial rights and early committed himself to independence as an unwelcome last resort, Adams' innate conservatism made him determine in 1770 that the British soldiers accused of the Boston Massacre receive a fair hearing. He defended the soldiers at their trial. He also spoke out repeatedly against mob violence and other signs of social disintegration. In 1774 to 1776, Adams was a Massachusetts delegate to the Continental Congress in Philadelphia. His speeches and writings, especially a newspaper series signed Novanglis in 1775, articulating the colonial cause and his brilliant champion of American rights in Congress, caused Thomas Jefferson to call him the, quote, Colossus of Independence, end quote. Adams helped draft the Declaration of Independence, secured its unanimous adoption in Congress, and wrote his wife on July 3, 1776, that, quote, the most memorable epic in the history of America has begun, end quote. 